Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. Filling in for the great one. He will be back with you on Monday. As he's got a lot, I'm sure he's going to want to tell you. Uh, about his awesome trip to Israel, we'll have he'll be back with you on Monday, and I'll be uh, with you for the next three hours here. So, I want to recap the Fourth of July in two different ways for you. You have two big different things. I, I guess you could say controversies. One, the President of the United States of America actually wanted to honor this country and the people that have protected and defended this country and, and made this country a great country. It's literally what we do on the 4th of July. Whether you're a crazy liberal who hates Donald Trump or an individual that loves the president, we all are doing the same thing on the 4th of July, in theory, which is to celebrate our independence, to celebrate our freedoms, to celebrate our ability to disagree with one another, then that we don't go to jail when we disagree with one another. We are celebrating the fact that we have a free and fair elections. We are celebrating everything that is America. So right before the 4th of July, you saw the liberals freak out over a pair of Nike tennis shoes, all because of a failed NFL quarterback who, I argue, hates America, in Colin Kaepernick. He tells Nike, you don't need to sell these shoes because I find them offensive. And we'll get into that in a moment. Now, when, when American shoes became offensive is beyond me. Now, there's a lot of hypocrisy that has gone on with this flag, this old American flag on the back of these Nikes. And the hypocrisy starts with the fact that these flags were used at one of Barack Obama's inaugurations. And nobody was freaking out then. Uh, I, I post this up on, on Twitter, and you can check out the, the picture there, and I put it up on Facebook as well if you want to see it, Ben Ferguson Show on Twitter and Facebook, uh, of, of these flags clearly flying at the inauguration of Barack Obama. And you didn't see Colin Kaepernick say he was offended by it then. You didn't see another liberal out there say they were offended by this old American flag. They used it. It is inauguration. It, this is not, and not a single person was losing it like they lost it this week because of Colin Kaepernick and because Nike telling you, you can't, we, you know, Nike saying, oh, we're so sorry, we didn't mean to offend anybody, we're not going to release the shoe. It also it blows up the narrative. Remember when Colin Kaepernick came out and, and, and the whole fight, uh, I said it's the wrong place and the wrong time to disrespect this country, national anthem, and the American flag by kneeling. And there were many progressives, Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, extremists that were saying, this isn't about the flag. This isn't about anti-American. This is about police brutality. Well, that narrative pretty much has been shot to hell now because it's obvious about America and the flag because Colin Kaepernick freaking out over it, demanding that Nike not release his shoes, is proof that he is anti-American. It is, it is proof that he cannot stand this country. He finds the same way that this soccer player representing the United States of America, whatever the hell her name is, kneels during the national anthem at the beginning of the game. And the reason why she does it, she kneels when we're honoring the flag, is because she's anti-American. Yet for some reason we allow her to be on the United States, the U.S. soccer team representing this country. Think about how messed up that is. Hey, look, if, if you don't like America and you don't like the flag and you don't want to honor the flag, you have a right to do that. That's what makes this country great. That's the part about this freedom that I understand. I understand what true freedom looks like. What true freedom looks like is allowing idiots to be idiots, allowing imbeciles to be imbeciles, allow, allowing people that are that are just absolutely ignorant of history to be ignorant of history. Colin Kaepernick's a great example of that. Anybody else freaking out over these Nike shoes is a perfect example of that. That is exactly how you know that we are free in this country. But this soccer player, for example, who kneels, you have a right to kneel. I don't know how anyone thinks she should be on the U.S. soccer team representing the United States of America. The Betsy Ross flag is not something that is offensive, just so you know. 
if you look at the Betsy Ross flag, which they used at Obama's inauguration when no one was offended, the circle of the stars represent eternity. The blue signals vigilance and perseverance and justice. The red and white different stripes there uh, denoted the, 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 the valor in the states that were there in 1776. Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, uh, South Carolina, uh, New Hampshire, Virginia, New York, North Carolina, Rhode Island, and I forgot one other. I think it was Maryland. I can't remember. It was one stripe for each of the 13 colonies. White symboled purity and innocence. How is that offensive? It's not offensive. It, it is not offensive. So why did Democrats and why did the left and why did the Colin Kaepernick get offended, offended by it? I'll tell you why they got offended by it. They got offended by it because it's pro-America. That's why they got offended. Now, you move on to July 4th. The President of the United States of America wants to honor this country. And what happened? Liberals lost their minds. You can't honor this country. This is, this is Donald Trump trying to honor himself. This is some, some sicko, some psychopath that just wants to make it all about him. This is psychotic behavior by a crazed president that wants to make the 4th of July about honoring him. Um, did you see it? No. I tweeted about this. There was AOC who tweeted out this idiot in AOC that tweeted out that it was disgusting how he was acting. That, that this was a disgusting display of Donald Trump making this all about him. In fact, let me just read you her exact tweet. It, she said, Trump spent millions on a poorly attended one-day parade days after saying he couldn't afford toothpaste and soap for caged children. Did he ask Congress for military parade money? Question mark, no. Trump held these kids hostage to secure billions for their abusers. Congress needs to see that. Okay, a couple different things here. One, this thing was not poorly attended, you crazy. It wasn't poorly attended at all. Second of all, it wasn't about Donald Trump. You, you look at, I mean, you look at multiple things that came out here that are just crazy. You have these far-left activists that were burning the American flag outside the White House on July 4th, and you have the president that's actually out there honoring the history, heritage of this country. That's the difference between the left and the right. You, you look at, uh, however, you know, Gabbards, whatever, Tulsi, whatever the crap her name is. And she said, she tweeted out, the self-serving politician that he is, Trump has succeeded in making July 4th about himself, and in doing so, further divided our country. This is a day when our nation's presence should be uniting us. Hashtag Independence Day. Tell me again, when did Donald Trump talk about himself in his speech about America? He didn't. He did not talk about this country. He didn't talk about himself. He talked about this country. He talked about what made this country great. He did not talk about himself. He, there was nothing self-serving about what he did. There is nothing self-serving about his speech. But the media, oh, if you listen to the media and what they had to say, and their, and their reaction to the fourth, it was incredible. In fact, MSNBC, and, and Mr. Producer, if you'll get this, it's, I think it's clip number two, MSNBC panel says that this celebration of America on the 4th of July, which many other presidents have done, this president just said, let's do it even bigger than before. We already have a celebration every year. I've attended many of them, uh, some of them on the grounds of the White House. When, when George Bush was president, I was blessed to be able to go on the 4th of July and watch the fireworks from the White House lawn. This MSNBC panel says this is, quote, just another campaign event. Take a listen. Men and women of the United States military. Joining me is MSNBC contributor Natasha Bertrand, Politico national security correspondent. Sam Sater is host of the Majority Report and Dion Rabowin, markets editor for Axios. OK, so I mean, safe to say, Natasha, President Trump defied some of his critics by pretty much sticking to script and avoiding politics. So was that much ado about nothing? I mean, the whole event 
was political. I mean, the RNC had a special kind of VIP area in front of Trump that was completely closed off to all of the spectators that had come to, to see the president and to, to witness this Fourth of July event. So I think the fact that he may have just stayed on script, um, which was not exactly a great speech, right? I mean, it was kind of like a, a little history lesson that, that lasted way longer than it probably should have. But the fact that he didn't go off on any wild tangents, I think, shouldn't take away from the fact that this was a highly politicized, highly militarized Fourth of July event. And the, the you know, thousands of spectators that were there to see the tanks and, you know, all of the other kind of equipment that, that the administration put up there um, in a kind of show of American military force, it was kind of like a, a blip in the background. They couldn't even get close to it. So the, the expectations for this were extremely high, I think, for people who supported the president. But ultimately, this was really just another campaign event. Yeah, actually, there were some reports that the folks who were there, who were presidential supporters, were a little disappointed that he did stick to script. And Sam, if it was a history lesson, it wasn't necessarily a very good one, because there were um, a lot of historians pointed out on Twitter a number of historical inaccuracies, including this one. The Continental Army suffered a bitter winter of Valley Forge. Our army manned the airport. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. And at Fort McHenry, under the rocket's red glare, it had nothing but victory. So let me, let me just jump in here real quick. I, I love how they're now criticizing him. And one of the reasons I want to play that for you is because now they're like, well, now we're going to criticize his bad history lesson. So now this president has, is someone that should be trashed because he actually tried to talk about the history of this country. That's what we're doing. We're, we're, now, we're now literally at a point where this president is so bad that even when he tries to just talk about the history of this country and how great it is, we're going to criticize him for it. Because they couldn't criticize him for it being all about him because it clearly wasn't all about him. That was their early on criticism. Their early on criticism was, this is nothing but a self-serving parade that's going to cost us millions of dollars that's going to be about the President of the United States of America. Well, that kind of blew up in their face when you actually listen to the speech. The speech was incredible. It taught us a lot about history, and there's a lot of young people that were watching that needed to learn about this history. And, and then there was the other part that's crazy here. The other part that's crazy here is that you actually have people that were mad that the president wanted to celebrate this country, just in general. That's how much they hate this president. They, they, they now say it's controversial to enjoy a flag and we will uh, attack Nike and make them take down their, their, their evil, evil shoes that have a Betsy Ross flag that is offensive now because of Colin Kaepernick. And we will also attack the President of the United States of America because he wants to celebrate America on July 4th. That is how much they hate this president. And many of the media, ABC, NBC, CBS, we are not going to carry this campaign rally. So, so having the 4th of July be the 4th of July, you're now not going to carry it. That's what you're doing. You cannot make up the hatred, the anger, the obsession. We're doing everything they can to try to destroy this president, and they hate people that actually have pride in this country. Because if you listen to Democrats and you listen to the left over this 4th of July, it is very clear they cannot stand this nation. They don't like it. They want to fundamentally change it. They want to alter it to something that we will never, ever be able to recognize again. They don't like our history. They don't like our heritage. They're ashamed of this nation. If you hear what they say about the 4th of July, they cannot stand how this country became a great country. This country, in their eyes, is a bad, evil country, and they want to change it. They want to alter it. That is what they want to do. I want to get your phone calls in here, get your reaction to the president, uh, Donald Trump, last night honoring this great nation. I, it wasn't about him. It was not a campaign rally. It was about the 4th of July. one 381 3811 one Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one, Mark Levin. We'll be right back. Mark Levin.
Since its founding in 1844, Hillsdale College has provided students with sound learning of the kind essential to preserving our civil and religious liberty. Now, I want to tell you about Imprimus, the free monthly speech digest of Hillsdale College. Imprimus is dedicated to educating citizens and promoting civil and religious liberty by covering important cultural, economic, political, and educational issues. First published in 1972, Imprimus is one of America's most widely read publications in support of liberty, with more subscribers, 3.9 million, than the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. And recent Imprimus publications have addressed issues like free speech, the regulation of big tech, mental illness, and the American medical insurance system. And because America's founding principles are so important, Hillsdale offers Imprimus absolutely free of charge to anyone who requests it. That's right. You can subscribe to Imprimus for free. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to visit Imprimus.Hillsdale.edu for your free subscription. That's Imprimus, I-M-P-R-I-M-I-S, dot Hillsdale, dot E-D-U. Welcome to Hillsdale. It is the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one. Just want to remind you that uh, Mark Levin will be back with you on Monday, and he's going to have a lot to say, I'm sure, about his trip to Israel. Uh, so make sure uh, he'll be back with you on Monday. I'm filling in in the meantime, and it's July 4th. It's a day where we're supposed to celebrate this country. Extreme leftists were in front of the White House burning the American flag. That's how much they hate this president. They wouldn't have been burning that flag if Obama was president, they wouldn't have been burning that flag if Hillary Clinton was president. They wouldn't be burning that flag if Bernie Sanders was president. They were burning the flag in front of the White House because they hate this president. That's how much they hate him. They're obsessed with hating this president. And everybody needs to understand that. This is about hatred. They attack the president for honoring his country and attack him because he wanted to celebrate this country in a big way he wanted to have and highlight our men and women in uniform he wanted to highlight the history of this country he made a flub in his speech about airports clearly not the intent and then they have they attack him for that everything that the media responded to with this president was to attack 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 Mainstream media, ABC, NBC, CBS, they refuse to carry it. That's how much they hate this president. They, will, they, they can't even honor this country or celebrate America if Donald Trump's associated with it because they hate him that much. That's how much they want to destroy him. July 4th, we're going to have a big, big celebration of America in Washington, D.C. Well, Donald Trump's president. We're not carrying it. Donald Trump is the president. We're not carrying it. Donald Trump is the president. We're going to say it's a campaign rally to justify us not carrying it. We'll tell people that it's about Donald Trump, not about America, and then we won't have to carry it. This country is so great that the people who burn its flag and hate it still refuse to leave it. Don't forget that. These liberals burning the flag... They're still here, my friends. They're still here. Much more. Coming up, Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in. You know, our nation's oldest colleges were founded to teach students to seek truth, recognize what's beautiful, and hold up what is good. But the vast majority of them have abandoned their missions, locked in the grip of political correctness. They no longer allow free and open discourse. Rejecting the idea of objective truth, they peddle moral and cultural relativism. Thankfully, none of this applies to Hillsdale College. For almost two centuries, Hillsdale has remained true to its original mission, to provide sound learning of the kind essential to preserving civil and religious liberty and intelligent piety. Now, as Hillsdale celebrates its 175th year, it remains committed to offering its students the very best liberal arts education in the land, as well as to extending its mission nationwide through its many outreach efforts on behalf of liberty. These include free online courses, the publication of its Free Speech Digest and Primus, its Kirby Center for Constitutional Studies and Citizenship in Washington, D.C., and its Barney Charter School Initiative, which is helping to establish classical K-12 charter schools 
nationwide. Pursuing truth and defending liberty since 1844, this is Hillsdale College. And let me add, I think so much of Hillsdale College. I donated an original copy of a compilation of the Federalist Papers, which sit today as I speak at the Kirby Center. Hillsdale College, America's College. Some people talk about the Tea Party. We are the Tea Party. Call in now, 877-381-3811. All right, welcome back. It is Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one, Mark Levin. If you just joined us, it is uh, July 5th, day after July 4th, and it's amazing how much liberals hate this country. Uh, They hate this country so much that even on July 4th, they can't just celebrate it without burning flags in front of the White House, without attacking the President of the United States of America, saying that the President is uh, making this celebration of this country on the 4th of July about him, even though there was nothing in there about it being anything about him at all. I mean, there was nothing in there at all about this quote being about him. It was about celebrating this nation, celebrating this country, and how amazing this country is. But no, 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 no. You have to talk. This, this is just pure, pure evil. This president's evil. He's, he's making this about himself. No, if you listen to what he said, he made it about America. Which is the job of the president on July 4th, regardless of what party you're in. one 381 3811 1-877-381-3811. Let me get to your phone calls. I want to go first to Jim in Las Vegas. You're on the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in. Hi. Yes, sir, Mr. Ferguson. I'll tell you, I usually don't agree with Mr. Trump, with President Trump, but his speech was very good. I'll say that. But what he did was make it about him by taking it and saying, I, I lived in D.C. for 30 years. I went to the mall about 15 years. We would go down, somebody would go down and stake out a spot for us to have a good viewing of the fireworks. We'd get there about 10 o'clock in the morning. What he did was make it, if you wanted a prime viewing spot, you had to contact the Republican Party. If he had done it, Department of Interior runs that area. If he made get tickets from Department of Interior, that would be one thing. But no, no, no. He made it that only his supporters would get tickets. All right, that, hold on one second. Wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out. Let's, let's, let's deal with, with facts here in reality. What you're saying is not accurate or true. There were areas around the president that all presidents have when they have public events that they had for staff and family and friends of the White House. Many of them are connected to the president through the RNC. Uh, When I, for example, worked with Bush 41, you got invited to go to things like the Easter egg roll. You got invited to go to Fourth of July celebration on the lawn. You got invited... Uh, to go to the to, to things like that because you were friends and family of the administration. Anyone could go down to the mall and watch the fireworks. The idea that you're saying he only hand-selected, if you look at the crowd, it's impossible. They didn't give out that many tickets. Now, when Obama was president, there's no chance in Hades I was going to get an invite to anything because I was a conservative. And they gave out tickets to friends, family, through the campaign, through the DNC, through the the fundraising groups that fundraise for the president. That's how it's always worked. But that's not that many tickets. You're trying to act like no one was allowed to go watch the fireworks on the at an open event on the mall without getting a ticket from Donald Trump. That's just that's just a lie. That's not true. It, that's never been true, Jim. I don't know why you're saying it that way, because you're misleading people, trying to act like you had to kiss the ring of the president to go and watch the fireworks. You can go watch the fireworks without having to go through the president of the United States of America. See, I understand if you, had, if you wanted to get on a White House lawn. Clinton had it where he had friends up on the balcony. That's a, that's a great place to watch it. I was never going to get tickets for that, whether I called the Democratic Party or anybody else. If he had given tickets to the Department of Interior or something, that would be one thing. But they have to contact the Republican Party. That you did not have, again, again, this is where, this is where your hatred of Trump is, is clearly messing with your mind. You did not have to contact Donald Trump to go watch the fireworks on the National Mall. That's a lie. You did not have to do that. You did not have to contact the Republican National Committee to get a ticket. 
you you are completely mis. I mean, you just it, you're just lying. It's it's complete lie what you're saying. There were literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people out there, many of them who live in D.C. that cannot stand this president. And they were there, and they hate this president. And you want to know why they were there? Because they wanted to watch the fireworks. I have been to D.C. when Obama was president, and I was able to watch the fireworks. And I've been lived in D.C. when the other guy was the president, George Bush. And guess what? I was able to watch the fireworks, and I neither of those people did I have to do what you're describing. That is a lie. You're lying to people. You're and I'm going to, I'm going to, you are lying. I'm going to move on. I'm, I'm done with you. Goodbye. Have a great day. And at some point, maybe you'll get off your obsession with hating this president. one 381 3811 1-877-381-3811. Edward in Arlington, Virginia. You're on the Ben, or you're on the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in I. Uh, yeah, I was at the event yesterday, and yeah, you did not need any tickets. You, I got in, no, no trouble. Now, during the uh, during the event and during the speech, you know, Code Pink was there, and during the time when uh, Trump was honoring the Gold Star families, Code Pink came through our section with a bunch of people blowing whistles, yelling and screaming, and it, it was it was so disrespectful. It was so. You couldn't. These people are just filled with rage, and uh, he wasn't disrupting Trump because at that place, I was on the north shore of the of the reflecting pool, and in, in, in about midway down, which is about a quarter mile away, still from the base of the of the Lincoln Memorial where he was. And he, he wasn't disrupting Trump. They came there to, uh, I, I, they came there to incite, try to incite some type of response out of the audience there. And these sure. are not all Republicans there. Well, there were- you, you live in you live in, in in Virginia, basically, just so people know where you live. It's like a suburb of D.C. It's not very far away. A lot of people that work in D.C. live exactly where you live. Uh, and and you, there's a I would argue the majority of the people that show up to the lawn, it, they're not there. They come regardless of who the president is. Many people there who are not Republicans. I know it. They were. I know for a fact they were not. And many people just came there because there was, they had the speech, there were the flyovers, there was the military armament, if you could get over. We didn't get over the sea there. It was a long way off. I didn't know how to get there. But it, it just to, another thing, these people are so enraged. There were actually, they were, Code Pink was selling balloons of Donald Trump. They look like lace potato bags of, the, like of, of this like hateful face of Donald Trump. And people were actually spending money on it. And I, I was like, which, Why? by the way, I love it when things like that happen. My point is, uh, it, we know that's proof that we live in a free country. What I also think it shows is exactly what I said earlier. It shows you of uh, the derangement hate fest for this president on the 4th of July. They absolutely hate this president to the point where they can't even just chill for a day and celebrate what this country is and the freedoms we have. They can't do it. Just like the last guy that called. Well, this 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 absurd conspiracy theory that you couldn't go to the National Mall and watch the fireworks without begging for a ticket from the RNC or from this president, which, again, is a lie. You're a perfect example of that. You went. You didn't have to have a ticket. It's th- these are the these are these psych- psychotic, crazy posts that people put on social media, and then the the people that hate the president just jump all over, going, "Yes, yes, me too, me too, yes, I I wanted to go and I couldn't get it. I'm not going because I'm not going to beg Donald Trump for a ticket. You didn't have to have a ticket from the president to go. Well, it's going to be a campaign rally for the president. This is all about him and his psychotic behavior, being obsessed with himself. No. No one, the, the president didn't talk about himself. He talked about this country, and he honored this country, and the men and women that fight and protect and defend this country. He highlighted our military that gave us the freedoms in this country and died for the freedoms in this country. What else do you want from this man? I don't get it. I appreciate the phone call. Thank you, Edward. Good to talk to you. one 381 3811 Kristen in Wisconsin, you're on the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in. Hi. Hi, Don. It was so awesome being on. And let me tell you, when I watched that, when I when I watched the program yesterday, I was floored. It he didn't come across as this is about me. It was all about the country 
and then he had the military choir sing, and then the planes flying overhead. There was a cadence to it. It was beautiful. And anybody, if it had been any other president, they would have, it would have been all over, and people would have been saying what a great speech it was, how how great it was. And Well, just imagine, imagine if Barack Obama would have done this. Serious question to everyone listening right now. Is there any doubt in your mind that if Barack Obama would have done this, that every network would have carried it? Not in my mind. They would have all carried it. They would have carried it, and they would have promoted it, and they would have previewed it, and they would have done everything they could possibly do to support it. It was wonderful. But anyway, thanks for having me on. Thank you. But this time it wasn't about, again, Donald Trump's involved in anything now. They don't want to be a part of it. They don't want to promote it. They, 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 they are obsessed with making sure that if the president is involved, even if it's in honoring this country on the 4th of July, that we refuse to be a part of it because we hate Donald Trump that much. That is what, if there's anything that's consistent with this media, it is that. And those that did cover it, many of them spent the entire time trashing the president, saying, well, this was, you know, it was, it was an embarrassing history lesson, and it was condescending, and the president clearly was obsessed with this being about him. And I think this was about really about his reelection and the conspiracy theories that they talk about as like it's fact. one 381 3811 one eight seven seven three eight one thirty eight eleven. Ben Ferguson filling in for Mark Levin. We'll be right back. Mark Levin. Every human being has a common problem. How do I live well? Our happiness and well-being depends on how we answer that question. Hillsdale College President Larry Arn argues that the best book ever written on this subject is Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. And a new free online course from Hillsdale College shares Aristotle's teachings that will help you lead the most complete, happy life possible. Register for this free course, Introduction to Aristotle's Ethics, How to Lead a Good Life, featuring lessons from the greatest self-help book ever written at levinforhillsdale.com. In just 10 on-demand videos, each only 30 minutes long, you'll learn how to confront the chief obstacles to happiness and make the choices that build good character. Aristotle presents a guide for securing a virtuous life. And if you take this free course from Hillsdale and heed Aristotle's advice, your life will change for the better. You can learn how to lead a good life just as every Hillsdale College student does. It's yours for free at levinforhillsdale.com. That's L-E-V-I-N for Hillsdale.com. there's like a quote for every occasion that is appropriate when it comes to Ronald Reagan. Uh, welcome back. It's Mark Vincio, Ben Ferguson filling in. I just put this up on, on my Facebook page if you want to check it out. Uh, ben Ferguson show on Facebook. I'll put it up on Twitter as well. It says, quote, conservatives believe every day is the 4th of July. Liberals believe every day is April 15th. Isn't that the truth? Uh, and again, all, you know, the 4th of July... Liberals can't even get a, can't even just chill for a moment and enjoy America, the country that is so amazing that even the people that burn the flag and hate it refuse to leave it. That's how great this country is. And so Donald Trump has this, we're going to celebrate America. We're going to have a big day. We, he, he defies the predictions of his critics with his nonpartisan patriotic Independence Day event, and they still hate him so much that they say, well, it was he was going to politicize it. The president did his best to celebrate our country to the best of his ability to highlight this country and like everything else is present done it was met with criticism from the mainstream media and the extreme left the extreme left that by the way was burning flags in front of the white house yesterday on july 4th this is the same people that now are, are attacking nike because they made a tennis shoe with a flag created by betsy ross and they said it's evil now because we, they were going to have a shoe that celebrated our nation's freedom and Colin Kaepernick, the guy who kneels, and I said all along it was not about police brutality, it was about hating America. Proof of it now, I think. And they say, well, this flag is now racist. So Nike goes, oh gosh, somebody yelled racism, we gotta, we're not going to release the shoe. This president 
didn't take any of the bait of all the ridiculousness, and he had a nonpartisan, unifying event and note a tone during his address to the nation on the 4th of July celebration in Washington, D.C. The event defied the critics who said the celebration would be partisan, it would be political, it would be a spectacle. It was an event that the, the left and the mainstream media refused to cover. CBS, ABC, NBC, MSNBC, they snubbed the celebration because they weren't going to give the president the time of day. Never would have done that to Obama. They said, we're not going to do it because it's just going to be a campaign event. That's how they justified it. I said that earlier. You want to know what Barack Obama had to say on the 4th of July? Here's Barack Obama talking on the 4th of July in his own words. Tell me how this isn't politicizing the 4th of July. And they covered it. No problem. Take a listen. That that story of independence uh, is not something that happens and then we just put away. It's something that we have to fight for every single day. It's something that we have to nurture. And we have to spread the word. And we have to work on it. And it involves us respecting each other. And it involves us uh, recognizing that there's still people in this country who are going hungry. And that they're not free because of that. There, there's still people in this country who can't find work. And, and, and freedom without the ability to contribute to society and, and put a roof over your head and your, look after your family, that's... That's not yet what we aim for. Even now, we're still perfecting our union, still extending the promise of America. And that includes making sure the American dream endures for all those, like these men and women, who are willing to work hard, play by the rules, and meet their responsibilities. For just as we remain a nation of laws, we have to remain a nation of immigrants. And that's why, as another step forward, we're lifting the shadow of deportation from serving, uh, from deserving young people who were brought to this country as children. It's why we still need a DREAM Act to keep talented young people who want to contribute to our society and serve our country. It's why stop we right need, there, Mr. Producer. Stop America- right there. Did you hear the politicizing? Did you just hear that? Barack Obama used July Fourth to advocate for immigra- illegal immigration and illegal immigrants to become American citizens. Did anybody criticize him for that in the media? No. Did anybody refuse to cover his speech because he just went political on July 4th to push a political agenda on July 4th? No. All they did was carry it because of the President of the United States of America. That's what they did. This was all about that, that you know, I mean, this is, there's nothing wrong with this. The President's talking on July 4th. We'll cover it. Did, did he politicize it? Yes. Did he talk about illegal immigration and how to give them citizenship? Yes. Did anybody criticize Barack Obama for doing that on July 4th, saying, Barack Obama, you will not find an article out there in the mainstream media by anyone that says that the President of the United States of America, Barack Obama at the time, politicized his 4th of July address to the nation or at an event where he turned it into a political rally to fight for illegal immigrants to get citizenship in America. You will not find that article. This president, Donald Trump, didn't talk about any of that. And they still criticized him. Continue to hit play, Mr. Producer. Comprehensive immigration reform. And we celebrate the principles that are timeless. Tenants first declared by men of property and wealth, but which gave rise to what Lincoln called a new birth of freedom in America. Civil rights and voting rights workers' rights and women's rights and the rights of every American. I have these vague recollections of when Republicans were saying Obamacare would kill jobs and crush freedom and bring about death panels. And Turns out we're still celebrating the 4th of July. The only difference is another 16 million Americans can celebrate it with health care. Again, Mr. Producer, again, you heard it there. He was, he was politicizing Obamacare on the 4th of July. Did anyone write an article saying, how dare you politicize the 4th of July? Ben Ferguson filling in for Mark Levin. We'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from the underground command post. Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hour two, and 
Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one, Mark Levin. Nice to have you with us this day after July 4th. Mark will be back with you on Monday as he returns from his amazing trip to Israel. I'm sure I'll have lots to tell you about with that one um, on Monday. So he'll be there. And uh, until then, I'm in charge of the ship, and I appreciate you being with us today. All right. We've got so much to go through today, and I'm trying to get as much of this done as, as quickly as I can. At the end of the day, the president of the United States of America was criticized by the media, and many of the media just showed their hatred and bias towards this president by refusing to actually celebrate this country, refusing to show what's going on in this country with this celebration of this country on the July 4th with an incredible celebration in Washington, D.C. The left cannot celebrate this nation if it's connected to Donald Trump. That's how much they hate him. Whether it's tennis shoes or the flag that was created by Betsy Ross, they, they hate this country as well. Whether it's celebrating our nation's freedom, they hate this country. The left is obsessed and criticizing this president because he is the president and they can't handle the fact they lost an election. Now, the president did what he said he was going to do, have a patriotic, nonpartisan, unifying tone during his address at a 4th of July celebration in D.C., which is exactly what he did. The event defied the critics, their logic, and what they said. They said this will not be a celebration. That's why they were able to not cover it or to run it or to air it. They said it was going to attract a small crowd. It was a significant crowd. Snoops even did a picture that someone took of, of the crowd being so massive and said it's true. Yes, there was a massive crowd. CBS, ABC, NBC, they all didn't cover it live, and the reason why is because and is they said, well, it's really just a campaign event for Trump. We're not going to carry it. There's no way they would have done that if Obama was president. They said, well, the president's going to politicize the 4th of July speech, which he didn't do. And then many in the media tried to ignore the speech the president gave because it was so good. Fox and Friends, and Miss Producer, get this ready because it's a great little clip here. Fox and Friends discussed this the day before talking about the celebration and, and, and even putting this together of, of just how the media was attacking the president and how wrong they actually were saying well this is going to be partisan it's going to be political the president didn't do any of that take a listen to this on flatbed trailers last night these are bradley fighting vehicles there will also be two u.s army m1 abrams battle tanks arriving the tanks took a train all the way from fort stewart in georgia to a rail yard in washington dc but once here the question was how to get them to the lincoln memorial here these two tanks weigh about 30 tons each but the abrams tanks weigh about twice as much of that so the question was do they go do they take the bridge will they be too heavy to drive direct on the road so they did arrive by flatbread trailer uh, but they did need a crane to actually get over an overpass because they were too tall to cross under it they eventually will be rolled up here to the Lincoln Memorial behind me where the president will be speaking there will also be flyovers the event will include B2 stealth bombers F-22 Raptor and F-35 stealth fighter of course the Blue Angels Marine One and Air Force One will also fly over uh, they it will also have the longest and largest fireworks show that the Capitol has ever seen. The National Park Service has reportedly set aside $2.5 million to fund this big celebration, but the fireworks themselves are free because the president tweeted that they've been donated. Back to you. Thank you so much, Hillary. Thanks. Right. By, by the so way, let me just pause there real quick. How is any of that something not to celebrate? Fireworks have been donated. Everything's exciting. Everything's amazing. We're celebrating this country. Huge fireworks show. Hundreds of thousands of people show up for this. Everybody's pumped about it. How do you not get excited about this? And none of what I just told you is partisan in nature. But by golly, we're going to... Yeah, it's partisan. It's partisan. Take a listen to this. Go ahead. On flatbed trailers last night, these are Bradley fighting vehicles. Oh, I, I'll get back to that audio in a minute. It, it reset there, and I want to get to your phone calls. The number one eight seven seven three eight one thirty eight eleven one eight seven seven three eight one thirty eight eleven. Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one. Let me go to Frederica in New York. You are on the Mark Levin show. Hi. Hey, um, I had uh, Frederica. We got a bad connection with you. Well, I'll put you back on hold and see if we can get you back. Raj in Virginia, you are on the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in. Hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ben, for 
for restoring integrity. And as you responded to those people, pointed out to them clearly that they were lying. It's just the whole thing's a lie. I mean, the whole thing is their obsession, and it's a lie. I mean, they're obsessed with destroying the president. They're obsessed with having a reason not to cover him. They can't even do the 4th of July without making their hatred just so clearly known. They, they, they cannot get over their hatred of this president. It is a, an obsession of this president that he is a terrible person, and we will not give him any credit or even allow him to be on stage without criticizing him for something. And we must take this insistence on integrity to all those who are feigning academic freedom. Our classrooms, I mean, beginning from the grade school right to the colleges, these professors, teachers, professors are spouting lies. Where is the code of conduct? Well, look, the, look, look, at, look at how many, just think about this for a second, look at how many people um, are are literally Raj right now, and I'm talking about I'm talking about young people, okay, yes. who now truly believe that the Betsy Ross flag, the circle of, of stars represented eternity, the blue, uh, you know, simplifies vigil symbolizes vigilance, perseverance, and justice. You have the red denotes uh, valor and, and hardiness in this country. The white and the red, white, the the, the, the alternating symbolize purity and innocence. And the stripes of each of the thirteen colonies now believe that this flag is racist. Because Colin Kaepernick told Nike the flag's offensive, the same flag that was flying behind Barack Obama in his inauguration in 2013 that no one criticized, no one had a problem with. And now there's an entire generation because of Nike and because of the, the, the probably thinks Betsy Ross is a racist, that America's a racist nation, that this flag is racist. And that is merely reinforcing what they've been doing. All our political, political science departments, they should be divested. The universities, community colleges should divest them of that and no longer grant them tax exempt status for their political partisanship. Look, Democrats, I will say this. Let me say this, Raj. Democrats are very smart. They understood that you can change a nation in one generation, and that's exactly what they've been doing. They got control of our public education system. And they got control of our public universities, and they are they are changing the minds of a nation in one generation because we have been shut out. Conservatives have been shut out of education at the public level, and that's why people need to pay attention. One eight seven seven three eight one thirty eight eleven. One eight seven seven three eight one thirty eight eleven. I think we have Frederica back. I'm going to try you again, Frederica. Are you there? Me now. Yes, can you hear you much better now? Go ahead. All right. Hey, Ben. Um, I was just listening and, uh, you know, to a lot of the conversation that was going on. And I'm like, I don't understand what the craziness is about the fact that the national station did not cover yesterday's, you know, Trump event. I mean, he called. It's, hold on one second. It's not a Trump event when it's the 4th of July and every president is doing the same event. Okay, it is still his event because he's the headliner, and he he makes it you know very uncomfortable for the media. So it's well, hard hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How is it uncomfortable to celebrate America? You know, how is that uncomfortable? You completely like alienate them every single chance that you get. Well, so, if you're non-biased and you're good at your job, you get over it and you do your job. Yesterday would have been a great example of an event that was actually really easy to cover based on what you're talking about. If I believe what you're saying, which I don't, but if I believe it, yesterday would be a break for the media where you could take a big, deep breath and go, finally, an event that I can cover that will be easy. If, 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 if there's a PTSD from covering Trump that you're describing, which, by the way, if you can't handle it, then you shouldn't be, in the, you shouldn't be a journalist anyway. But if there is what you're saying, let's just say I buy this narrative for a second, okay? Then yesterday would be the day you would absolutely cover this because it would be so easy for you to cover because it's about the 4th of July and the president did a speech that was not about politics at all. But the problem is, is that when you, you know, constantly cover him 
and you constantly, you know, get treated that you're fake news, that you're not covering it right, that whatever it is that you're saying is all, like, not good, and it's not about me, then maybe they said, you know what, we just stopped going so, to So let me get this straight. When the, when the, when the, when the mainstream media was attacking Donald Trump and saying he'll never be elected and mocked his presidency, mocked his candidacy, and then they attack him day in and day out. You're not holding them accountable for any of that. You're saying that you're basically what you're saying is, is you're giving a pass to the media to be crybabies and to not do their job because Donald Trump is hard on them and criticizes them for their clear bias towards him. You said that. What I'm saying is, I'm is asking that- you. I'm asking you because I'm. I'm. I'm I, I. The difference between I, I cut out the BS and just talk bluntly. And we're talking bluntly now. What you're saying is, is that the that the media are basically a bunch of crybabies, and I should feel sorry for them and understand why they cover the president in such a terrible way. Say that you said that. What I it has to be understandable. It's not understandable. That's the point I'm trying to tell you. Frederica, the idea that you think that the pre- the media beats up Trump and he punches back, it's not the other way around. Donald Trump is not the one beating up the media. The media, all of them consistently are coming after him. He just stands up for himself, and now you're trying to act like the media uh, should, should get a get-out-of-jail-free card. They can't stand this president because he's a conservative. They can't stand this president because he stands up for this country that many of them can't that hate is that every single show that I listen okay. to that is covered... Frederick, I'm going to move on because you're, you, you clearly... Look, go check yourself into Trump rehab. You can't even see straight to the point where you're covering for the media for them and advocating for the media literally to not do their job. That's what you're advocating for. You're advocating for the media to not do their job, giving them a reason to not do their job. They're not 12 years old. They're not 15 years old. These are supposed to be the best journalists in the world. And you're basically saying, oh, give them a warm hug. So anytime anybody criticizes the media, you, you, you now believe that the media should then not be, the media should then be able to biasly cover that person. Anytime anyone asks a question, the media confronts the media. Now the media is the victim. That is, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I treat them like adults, not like infant children. Call me old fashioned. If you can't handle the job, then don't do the job. If you can't handle the job, then don't do the job. one 381 3811 Ben Ferguson filling in for Mark Levin. We'll be right back. Mark Levin. You know, Democrats said that they couldn't cover yesterday's uh, celebration of America and our freedom and independence on the 4th of July because Donald Trump was going to politicize it and make him about himself, which did not happen. You want to know what the other Democratic candidates were saying uh, on the 4th of July? And no one's ever criticized them for what they said on the 4th of July. Quote, politicizing the 4th of July. Take a listen to this. Donald Trump is handing out tickets to his big donors. That's a campaign event. And if he's going to do a campaign event, then it should be paid for by his campaign contributions. It should not be paid for by the American taxpayer. It's not a show of strength. It's a show of insecurity. Think about this. Think about the strongest, toughest person that you know. Picture that person. I bet you it's not the kind of person who goes around talking about how strong and tough they are. And every time the president has our country looking like the chest-thumping loudmouth at the end of the bar. I said it before, I don't think he understands. This is America's birthday, not his birthday. This president, seemingly without much reflection or thought, is prepared to send our troops to various places around the world, most recently Iran. And what I'd ask is that he thinks about, you know, he wants to have a military parade. Why don't you think about military families? Wow. Yeah, let's 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 not politicize, right? We we don't want to politicize July fourth, so so we're gonna literally politicize July fourth. Did the president take any shots at, at Democrats on July fourth? No. Did he attack anybody on July fourth in a speech? No. 
Did he even go as political as, as, as Obama went when he was doing multiple July 4th? No. Mr. Producer, do me a favor. That, that, that montage we had of Obama on July 4th, where he talked about politicizing health care, he politicized everything virtually he wanted to. Nobody criticized the president for politicizing July 4th when he was doing July 4th speeches. Nobody did. No one went out there and politicized July 4th. Nobody nobody went out there and said, we're going to, you know, how dare Barack Obama do a speech on July 4th where he's advocating for Obamacare, where he's attacking, attacking the Republicans on X, Y, or Z. Again, that never happened. He took July 4th and, 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 and politicized the hell out of it. And if you don't believe me, I'm old enough to remember there's tape of it. Take a listen. That, that story of independence uh, is not something that happens and then we just put away. It's something that we have to fight for every single day. It's something that we have to nurture. And we have to spread the word. And we have to work on. And it involves us respecting each other. And it involves us uh, recognizing that there's still people in this country who are going hungry. And that they're not free because of that. There, there's still people in this country who can't find work. And, and, and freedom without the ability to contribute to society and, and put a roof over your head and you're looking after your family, that's, that's not yet what we aim for. Even now, we're still perfecting our union, still extending the promise of America. And that includes making sure the American dream endures for all those, like these men and women, who are willing to work hard, play by the rules, and meet their responsibilities. For just as we remain a nation of laws, we have to remain a nation of immigrants. And that's why, as another that's step pretty, forward, let me, just, we're lifting- let me just jump in here. That's pretty political, isn't it? Ben Ferguson filling in for Mark Levin. We'll be right back. Levin Show, live and national at 877-381-3811. Welcome back. It is Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one. He will be back with you on Mondays. He comes back from his uh, incredible trip to Israel. In the meantime, uh, I am holding down the fort for the great one today. Uh, a lot of you have been asking me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, if I would post, I went through that kind of the Betsy Ross flag, what actually it means how it was done, the history of it. Uh, I post that up there, so if you want to see it, it's uh, Ben Ferguson show on Facebook and Twitter. You can grab that there. Uh, in the meantime, I want to get back to just one other thing real quick. Uh, someone sent me a note, and I just I got to read to you. It says, Ben, yesterday there was one thing that was clear. The celebration of America was really trying to celebrate Donald Trump. Show me one part in there where it was about Donald Trump. It wasn't. And if it was, the media would have actually played the audio and come out and said, how dare Donald Trump do this? Look at how obsessed he is with himself. Look at what he did here. Look at how this was going down. Look at what he was saying. Look at what he did. They haven't done that because it wasn't there. And then they criticize the the, the president saying, well, you know, this just costs too much money. We shouldn't have spent this much money. Fireworks are donated. Well, you know, there was there was all the logistics and they had to bring in all this military assets from all over the country on trains. And and it was just terrible. and They should have never done it. If he wouldn't have celebrated July 4th, they would have criticized him for that, too. Adam, you're on the Mark Levin show. Ben Ferguson filling in. Hi. Yes, I wanted to make a couple points. The first one would be uh, just about the parade, um, the money that was spent for it. I would have liked to have seen maybe just the Blue Angels showcasing maybe you know, a little bit of our military. But, you know, the old analogy where uh, an old rich person typically doesn't show their wealth with material items. They always kind of be seen kind of wearing the same kind of outfits, you know, drive the same practical car. Um, because they don't really want to, they don't need to show anybody their assets. And, and I think that's the kind of same thing, us being the leader, uh, of the world, in a sense. We don't need to really show 
our buff all the time, I don't think. And, and I just think that uh, we could So you, you, you believe that we should have the mentality that, that Obama kind of had for eight years, which is we should downplay America's greatness. We should do everything we can to, to kind of be quiet about America. We shouldn't be proud of America. We should go around the world apologizing for America. So you mean, are you saying tanks and missiles is what the, is the representation of America? I'm saying that on July 4th, you celebrate our military, and you do understand that without a military, we wouldn't be celebrating our freedom in July 4th. That's a fact. Wait, I thought, I, We've wait, always I thought, celebrate our military on July 4th. We've celebrated our history on July 4th. We're talking about our freedom. We fought for our freedom. Literally, July 4th is actually about a military battle which allowed for us to have our freedom from England. You do understand that. Yeah, but do you? So, how do you celebrate July Fourth and take military out of it, which is what you're describing here? How would you do that? Tell me how you sell, and I mean this sincerely. Tell me how you celebrate July Fourth, admitting the fact that it's all about a war that we won and someone else lost. No, no. What I said was the Blue Angels would be a good form of that is what I The Blue I Angels is, sh- is showcasing our military might and power of our Air Force. So based on your logic, we should we should ground them and burn the planes because it's too military-esque. No, I did not say I said that we should we, I said we could have used our First of all, you know what, Ben? So, so what, let me ask this, Adam. What is it yesterday that you would have taken away from? You're saying you want to limit the amazing power of, of, of our military by showing our, the amazing power of our military through the Blue Angels. Do you want them to, like, not fly in formation so they don't look as good? Do, do, we, do we have just, like, one Blue Angel fly over and just go, there's an airplane? Do they not do any tricks? Do they not do any formations? Because that's too being too cocky, too arrogant, too boisterous of being of America. I mean, maybe we just say, hey, guys, don't look like you know what you're doing. Just kind of fly left, right, up, down. Just don't do anything that looks too good. We don't want to overplay the amazingness of our Blue Angels or our military or America. So you guys just kind of fly around in circles, just try not to hit each other, but don't do anything that looks amazing. Just look average. Okay, so check this out, uh, Ben. People are on hold for a long time for you to just, like, talk, 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 and not even get a chance for the call to actually... I'm filling in today, Adam. That's what I do. I'm a talk show host. You called me. Yes, I, you did have to wait. I'm not going to apologize for that. It's a big radio show that Mark Levin has. But I'm going to have a discussion with you and a conversation with you about what you're advocating for and how ridiculous you sound while doing it every single time. I, I mean, now what? Now I'm now I'm unfair to you because I call you out on the insanity. You're saying, "Well, I don't like the I don't like the tanks that are sitting there on the street corner showing America's military. I just want the Blue Angels, but 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 I don't want to be too big. I don't want to be too powerful." Let's dial down America's greatness. That's what we had for eight years under Obama. Remember, when he got elected, he went around the world apologizing, like, hey, I'm really sorry, America's awesome. We, we don't want you to feel inferior. Like, hey, we're going to dial it back. We're not going to tell you how great freedom is. We're going to chill on that. We're going to let people use nerve gas like Assad did and, and, and gas innocent women and children. And America will not stand up for them, even though I say it's a thin red line, uh, because I don't want America to look too great. I don't want America to look too military in our mind. Hey, we're going to apologize for, for capturing terrorists and putting them in Guantanamo Bay. In fact, I'm going to close down Gitmo, and I'm going to release a bunch of terrorists. Hey, Iran, I'm really sorry that we seized some of your money when you're a terrorist organization while you're getting nuclear weapons. We're going to send you those unmarked bills back to you in the billions of dollars, and then we're going to sign a piece of paper so I don't look like I have to go to war with you over anything, and that will make everything better. Hey, go ahead, Assad, gas some more people after I told you it was a thin red line because I don't want America's military to get involved because we may look too powerful. Instead, we'll go around the world apologizing for what we are. Good Lord. Donut, you're on the you're on the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in. Hi. Hi. Um, I am calling with... For one thing, the Democrats criticize Obama or or, or our President Trump for every step he takes. It doesn't matter what he says, what he does. They're going to bash him. The media and the Democrats are going to do that. Now, to get on to the reason of my call, our president was born and raised in a period of time in our history when we were taught to respect those people that were there to protect us. And we do that every single day. Our president does that every single day. I love him for it. 
because that's the generation I came from. I was taught what the history of this country is, and I respect what he's doing thoroughly. Now, I, I am, I feel very shamed that the Democrats and the media have refused to recognize our, our celebration yesterday. It was our celebration of our great country. Shame on them. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write a postcard, as I do frequently, to every single one of them and telling them how shameful their behavior is. I thank you very much. Hey, thank you for listening, and I appreciate your phone call. Nice nice to talk to you. Let me go to Ryan. You are on the Mark Levin Show with Ben Ferguson today. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Good, sir. Good. I uh, was told we were talking about the uh, citizenship question, but uh, I could talk about this, too. No, go go ahead. So, I mean, with this, this is America, and it kind of ties in with the citizenship question on the census. You know, we're here. We're here to welcome everybody, and we want everybody to come here. We want them to come here legally, but we want them to be able to celebrate in what is America, the beauty that is America, the freedom that we have, that we won the military might and you know with the census question the chief justice roberts talks about how it's arbitrary and capricious and how with the pretext and saying that the the administration's lying and everything and how there's really an ulterior motive well you know what people don't have to answer that question there are only a couple of questions on the census that are required one of them is how many people are there you know and but you can have all these other questions. And, you know, well, well, I do the, want... the president, and, and just so people understand what you're referencing, the president said that he might use executive order to get the citizenship question on the 2020 census. And it's a simple question. The question on whether or not the citizen is, a, is, is an American citizen is one that should be a no brainer. It is a question that should be included. Um, the Commerce Department announced last year the question would be included in the census. The president spoke out of defense of adding the, uh, adding the question, saying, quote, it's totally ridiculous that we would have a census without asking if you're an American citizen. Now, this case involving whether the question should be added made it all its way down to the Supreme Court of the United States of America, which is also crazy. The Supreme Court on Thursday blocked, for now, the Trump administration's plan to include a question on the 2020 census and inquires about a person's citizenship status. And the court said the administration's explanation for adding such a question is insufficient, and they sent it back to the lower courts for further consideration. Now, the ruling marks a, a, a setback, as the left said, for the administration. It's not yet resolved, which was the point of sending it back down. Now, the whole point here of, the, of this question on the census is that we should make sure that American citizens are adequately and proportionately represented in Washington. Let's also remember the 5 4 court majority raised concerns about the Trump administration's explanation for the proposal. They did not say that it should or should not be actually on the census. And, and Chief Justice John Roberts said the court was presented with an explanation for agency action that is incongruent with what the record reveals about the agency's priorities and decision-making process. He added that the court cannot ignore the disconnect between the decision made and the explanation given. That's why, again, why they sent it back down. Now, the, the Trump administration, all they're trying to do here, and this is pretty simple, is make sure that we have proportional representation that is honest based on the, 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 the citizenry of this country, making sure that we're not giving too much power to some areas of the country and not enough power and representation in Washington to other parts of the country because illegal immigrants are being counted in the census. Trump administration claims that the question is necessary because it would help enforce Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, which deals with voting practices that discriminate based on race. Back in April... Donald Trump tweeted out about this saying, quote, can you believe that the radical left Democrats want to do our new and very important census report without the all important citizenship question report would be meaningless in a waste of the billions. And then he puts in parentheses ridiculous that it costs to put it together. The four left leaning Supreme Court justice also noted experts at the Census Bureau have said the citizenship question 
could lead to an undercut of as many as 6.5 million Americans in urban areas. So who matters more? American citizens that could be undercut or the 20, 22 million illegal immigrants that are here, why should they have power in Washington when they are not American citizens and they're in this country illegally? That's exactly why the president, Mr. Producer, if you'll grab the audio from uh, the, the Trump is thinking about an executive order because the president's right. The president is absolutely right on this one. You need an executive order to do this census the right way and make sure that illegal immigrants don't have more power than American citizens. Take a listen. Do it in the form of an executive order. We're thinking about doing that. It's one of the ways. We have four or five ways we can do it. It's one of the ways that we're thinking about doing it very seriously. We're doing well on the census. No, he made a statement. He wrote something out. The judge didn't like it. I have a lot of respect for Justice Roberts, but he didn't like it. But he did say, come back. Essentially, he said, come back. That's what he was saying. So we'll see what happens. We can also add an addition on so we can start the printing now and maybe do an addendum after we get a positive decision. So we're working on a lot of things, including an executive order. Joe Biden, Joe Biden called you a bully in an interview last night. What do you think of that? I don't think I'm a bully at all. I just don't. Yeah, I love the I love the Biden question there. Let me just say this real quick, and then I'm going to get your reaction to this. According to the New York Times, the liberal New York Times, the United States is home to about 22 million illegals, roughly 7.5% of the population. And about half of that number are actually undocumented. In Texas, Democrats who believe their party is on the cusp of challenging Republican dominance are obsessed with a plan to cut out non-citizens because they think that illegal immigrants can give them an advantage and extra power. I'll have a lot more on this coming up next on the census question, what the president should do here uh, and why you should be very concerned about that coming up next on the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in. We'll be right back. Mark Levin. There's a headline that you, in Hollywood that actually is funny that you just got to laugh about. Mr. Producer, you're going to love this. So you remember the, the, the movie Wolf of Wall Street, you know, that they have with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, the guy that says, we're all going to die of global warming, and then goes and gets on his G5 jet? Yeah, that guy. Anyway, this is just hilarious. The Wolf of Wall Street producer has been arrested on money laundering charges. <laughs> You you can't make that up. Like, literally, the guys producing at Wolf of Wall Street gets arrested for money laundering. God bless America. Oh, stay, stay, stay crazy, Hollywood. Stay crazy. All right, I want to get back to the census question issue, and, and I haven't. It, it's just there's, it's been bothering me now for a couple of weeks where people don't understand the reason why the census question is in, in, important. They don't understand the context of it. They don't understand why the president's fighting over it. According to the New York Times, I use them because this is the crazy New York Times. The United States is home to about 22 million illegals. Roughly 7.5% of the population, if you look at it in those numbers. About half of that are undocumented. Now, why do Democrats not want a census question... On, I, I, excuse me, a citizenship question on the census. I'll give you a great example. Texas. Texas is a perfect example. Democrats uh, want more seats in Congress in liberal areas. That's what they want. They want more seats in liberal areas like Austin, um, El Paso, San Antonio, Dallas proper, Houston proper, because there's such a dense population of illegal immigrants there. Um, Manny Garcia, the executive director of the state Democratic Party, said 
this about his Republican rivals. Quote, they will do everything in their power to cling to power to their last breath. No, we just don't want illegal immigrants controlling the state. We don't want Democrats gaining seats because of illegal immigrants who are not American citizens. I'm going to have a lot more on this coming up on the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in. We'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Welcome in. It's the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one who will be back with you on Monday. And we got a lot to get in here in this last hour of the show, so... Uh, I'm not going to waste any time getting straight to this main point. Number one, uh, the census. There's been a lot of people debating, talking about it, saying, oh, the Supreme Court smacked down Donald Trump with his racist census question. Not what happened. Supreme Court sent it back down to the lower courts to argue over it. Happens all the time. Why is the president fighting over the census question of asking if you're a U.S. citizen? It's very simple. He wants to make sure that there's proportionate representation for American citizens and not based on illegal immigrants. I absolutely love it when the New York Times gives me ammo, and they've done it. The New York Times, according to them, the United States has home to about 22 million illegals. That is roughly 7.5% of our population. About half of that number are undocumented. Democrats believe that their party would significantly increase its number of seats in Congress and their power if the census is taken without knowing if someone is here legally or illegally. With, if, you, if you just put everybody together in the census, they believe that that's going to make things work in their favor. It will also disenfranchise people in rural areas significantly don't take my word for it look at what the new york times said about it they said the same thing the democratic party sees illegal immigrants as an opportunity for them to gain seats in congress because in densely populated areas major metropolitan areas that are border areas austin el paso san antonio Houston proper, Dallas proper, those types of areas. They know that there is a significant number of illegal immigrants, and if you count them in the census, then all of a sudden there's a good chance that the census numbers will come back and say you need to add one or two or three or four or five more seats in Congress from that area, and that means they would be taken away from other areas. There's a reason why there's more senators from North and South Dakota than there are congressmen, because congressional seats are based on population. It's also how we come up with the Electoral College numbers, which means that if you count illegal immigrants, there are more electoral votes that would come from places like California because you're counting illegal immigrants, which should have no bearing on our election. It makes California more, more powerful than ever before in, in deciding who our president is if you count illegal immigrants. That is exactly why illegal immigrants... And are why Democrats want illegal immigrants to be relevant in our census and want to make sure that, they, that there is no distinction between an American citizen and an illegal immigrant. They need them to be the same. Because if we count them as the same, they gain significant power. It gives them a significant advantage in the presidential election. It gives them a significant advantage in who the Speaker of the House is and who runs the agenda, whether it's Nancy Pelosi or another conservative. They're not stupid. They understand it. They are not dumb. They comprehend it. They get it. Why do you think they're going all in on this? This is why they're going all in. 
they need this to win because it's not this is nothing but a way to cheat when i tell people that illegal immigrants in this country are when democrats care more about illegal immigrants than they do about american citizens this is also proof of that they don't care about american citizens if they did they would make sure that this census question is on there are you here legally or illegally are you an american citizen or are you not they don't want that question that question hurts their power because they can't win just counting americans that also tells you how messed up their agenda is they cannot win on their own just convincing the hearts and minds of americans they now need to cheat they now desperately need to count illegal immigrants for this reason one eight seven seven three eight one thirty eight eleven one eight seven seven three eight one thirty eight eleven i want to get your phone calls in here and get your reaction to this uh the, the executive director of the state democratic party for example in texas said about republicans they would do everything in their power to cling to power to their last breath no that's what democrats are doing they're clinging to power doing everything in their power to cling to power by by doing by trying to count illegal immigrants by trying to count them in our census to give them an advantage to allow them to have a much higher number of seats in the house and to have a much larger number of electoral votes in liberal states where they usually win or almost always win representative armando wally a democrat whose state House district lies in the 29th Congressional District, argued that excluding non-citizens from redistricting would be, quote, catastrophic. And he's right. He's telling the truth. He said, quote, it would push folks, undocumented or otherwise, further into the shadows. It would deny representation to a whole class of people who are actually contributing to society. He's admitting that only counting American citizens would be detrimental to illegal immigrants and detrimental to his, his political career. He's admitting that Democrats are terrified of not counting illegal immigrants. Uh, in, in Houston, for example. Redrawing maps without non-citizens could amount to a political sea change. Removing non-citizens from redistricting calculations would force immigrant-rich rich districts like Houston, where I am tonight, and Houston's 29th, uh, to expand their borders to make up for the loss of population, meaning that a district with that is so intense and so small now would have to expand to other areas to count other Americans that might not be hardcore liberal. It would make them have to expand to make up for loss of population. Those districts are overwhelmingly Democratic strongholds. Expanding them would often mean absorbing constituents from adjacent Republican areas. Districts with few non-citizens, on the other hand, would have to shrink. So to make this even more real, and this, I'm giving you an example to try to make this un- so you understand just how catastrophic this could be to liberals if we actually ask this simple question. To make it even more real for you as to how much of an impact illegals have just in the state of Texas, roughly one in ten Texans is a illegal immigrant a non- or a non-citizen. Some people are here legally, but they're a non-citizen, right? According to unpublished data from the Pew Research Center, Corresponding figures in the metropolitan Houston area is closer to one in six are illegal immigrants. Let's look at the residents. There are 6.8 million residents in Houston. 1.1 million of those are illegal immigrants. And half a million of them are undocumented. You take out 1.1 million people from the census that are illegal immigrants, it changes the entire map and, and, the, and these liberal strongholds where they get an advantage by counting people that broke into America. You don't believe me? Let me go back to the New York Times, the liberal New York Times for a second. They created a congressional seat map based on the 2016 American Community Survey. One-year population data instead of the 2010 census upon which the current map is based. On this map, 
Texas, Florida, North Carolina, and Oregon all have significant number of seats they gain in the census, with these census numbers. Illinois, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Minnesota all lose a seat. So if th- this isn't even about just these little areas. This is about if you don't live in another area, if you don't live in another area of the country that is outside of these border areas, you're getting screwed too. The states I just told you about, you lose an entire elected official. Think about that. Now, some of the areas I just gave you, by the way, are states that are actually pretty liberal that didn't vote for Donald Trump. I'm advocating for you here. Notice that. And the reason why I'm advocating for you is because I advocate for all American citizens, and I do not advocate for people that aren't American citizens when it comes to our elections. Call me old-fashioned. Call me, seriously, call me old fashioned. I think that only Americans should have a say so in our election process. I think that only Americans should be represented in Washington, not illegal immigrants. I don't believe that's a crazy idea. I think it's crazy to actually think that illegal immigrants should have a say-so in Washington and should be represented in Washington. And that is exactly what the Democrats are advocating for. They are advocating for illegal immigrants to have representation in Washington. It is not racist to have a question on the census if you're documented or undocumented, if you're illegal or illegal, however you want to put it. That is not crazy. Not asking the question is absolute insanity. Insanity. It's lunacy. No other country in the world allows for people that break in their country to actually have representation in, in, in their capital, in their political system, in their government system. Why are the Democrats clinging to this? Why are the Democrats obsessed with this? It's because they can't win by just representing Americans. They cannot win by just representing American citizens. They now have to cheat. They now have to cheat. one 381 I want to get your reaction to this. one 381 3811 Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one. Mark Levin will be back with you on Monday. Don't forget to grab his new book. It's on Amazon, anywhere you can buy a book. Check it out. It's incredible. Uh, if you haven't gotten Mark's new book, you got to do it. He'll be back with you on Monday. Uh, also, uh, many of you reaching out right now to, on social media. Uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook and Twitter, Ben Ferguson Show on Facebook and Twitter. Let me just read a note that came in a second ago. It says, Ben, you suck. Uh, you want to not count immigrants, that we are a nation of immigrants, why do you hate immigrants so much? It's clear that you hate people that have a different skin color than you. It's I, I love the good old, if you disagree with illegal immigrants, therefore, you, you and how condescending, by the way. There are, there are immigrants in this country and illegal immigrants in this country that are as white as I am. Not all immigrants or illegal immigrants come from Mexico, by the way. But way to racially profile people. Great job there. Now... As for me hating people, me saying that I want to make sure that American citizens have, and, and those in rural areas, have proportional representation. Instead of counting a bunch of people that are in this country that cannot vote, being represented in the census, is just makes, it's just common sense. This is, this is flat out common sense. This is not crazy that we want to make sure that representation of one state doesn't decrease while another state significantly increases. And some of the states that are going to lose a congressman, 
without having proper identification of if someone is in this country legally or, le- or illegally, if they are a legal resident or not, if they're an American citizen or not, I should say, is unfair to many liberals in rural areas of the country. But Democrats don't care about representing American citizens. They care about representing illegal immigrants if that means they can gain more power. That's why they're fighting tooth and nail. That's why they desperately need illegal immigrants to be counted and not have a citizenship question on the census. This is what desperation look and sounds like. They are desperate. Completely desperate. The number, one 381 3811 one Ben Ferguson filling in for Mark Levin. Let me get to your phone calls. I want to go to, uh, let me go to Marco. You are on the Mark Levin Show. You're in California. Uh, in California, you guys would gain seats, no doubt about it. You wouldn't lose seats with this census question the way it is, how Democrats want it. What do you say? Hey, Ben. Well, great job. Uh, I'm actually a Hispanic conservative. I was actually born outside the country. I was illegally here, and thanks to President Reagan, I gained my my legal status, and I'm so grateful. So, first of all, Hispanics would not, uh, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't answer the census question whether whether we had it or not. They, they, if there's a citizenship question, they're not going to answer it either way. So I don't know why the Democrats are all bent out of shape about it. They, they don't want to participate. They don't want to participate. But I would I would say that it, it's it's ridiculous. It's asinine that Democrats wouldn't want to know exactly how many illegal aliens are here and how many citizens are here and really compartmentalize everything. They're so good at compartmentalizing things. Why are they not compartmentalizing this? Well, you just mentioned and, you just mentioned part of this compartmentalizing. I do believe one of the reasons why Democrats don't want to have compartmentalized like how many people are here legally or illegally is because that would be so damning to them and it would make people understand just how open our borders actually are, seeing significant increases every 10 years. You're right. They, we would probably have like 50, 50 million on the count instead of the, the downside. Well, even, even if it's 25 or 30 and you compare that 10 years ago and 10 years before that, the numbers would be staggering, which would play into the to what many conservatives have been saying. Open borders are destroying this country and we have millions of people coming in and out and in and out and in and out. And, they, and they're terrified of that, Marco. They're terrified of confirmation of that. one 381 3811 Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one. We'll be right back. This is the nation's town hall meeting, and you can join in at 877 381 3811. By the way, there's a hilarious montage we're going to play for you in a minute. Uh, of MSNBC's obsession with hating uh, on the Trump um, 4th of July celebration. I'm going to play it for you coming up because it's just, it's incredible. Uh, it, I mean, it, it is absolutely incredible to see how many hours they have spent attacking the president over honoring this country, our troops, those that protect and defend us, uh, and just and calling it. They, even their, one of their headlines they had at the, scrolling at the bottom of the screen was, Trump hijacks 4th of July. <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I mean, it's just, it's in, you can't make it up. You, I mean, you just, you cannot make it up. Trump hijacks 4th of July. That's hard to do. I mean, that's, that's giving, that's giving the, the, the president a lot of credit. When you, when you are so powerful that you can hijack the 4th of July, you know you've made it. I mean, that's that's making it, folks. When you can hijack an entire holiday, that's an, that's an, I mean, that's an accomplishment right there. All right, back to the census issue. We've been talking about Democrats now obsessed with counting uh, illegal immigrants. And the reason why they want to count illegal immigrants is so they can get more representation in Congress, that's the play. 
It's really that simple. And many people like myself are saying, hold on a second. We don't need this. This is a bad decision. Let me go to Charles. Thanks for waiting. You are on the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in tonight. How are you? Hi, Ben. Ben, I, I appreciate what you're doing, man. It's really good. I'm a four, fourth of five generations of combat vets, and uh, you're talking about the representation of uh, co- Congress in Congress of people from these uh, cities and states. I'm in the middle of uh, Silicon Valley out here, and with all these tech companies, we also have not only the illegal population, but also H-1B visas that maybe are people overstaying those visas as well. And not only does this affect the congressional representation, but it also affects the electoral college, which is basically what elects the president. And with them wanting to push and and make sure that they gain the presidency again by having an inflated number in the census, it gives places like San Francisco, L.A., uh, Seattle, New York, these big cities more oomph to... Uh, turn the electoral college their way. Well, and again, look at this. If you, the New York Times, again, I'm quoting them because, you know, then liberals can't criticize where I'm getting the data from. They create a congressional seat map based on the 2016 American Community Survey. It's a one year population survey data. And on the map, Texas, Florida, North Carolina, and Oregon all gained a seat. Not a conservative state, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Minnesota, liberal state lost a seat. Now, apparently, experts don't know how large of an undercut, undercount the 2020 citizenship question could produce, but they warn it could, you know, quote, intimidate non-citizens to be involved. That's what they argue here. Well, the next map made by the New York Times estimated that what would happen if 15% of non-citizens didn't get counted. California and New York would lose a seat. Colorado and Montana, Montana would gain a seat. So, of course, Democrats want illegals to get counted. Colorado is a, is a known swing state. Montana is a red state. While both California and New York are, are solidly Democrat, that this would hurt California uh, much because you see California has 53 seats currently, more than every other state in the United States, period. It would have, uh, it would have to lose 17 cents just to reach a number from the second highest state, Texas, at 36. So New York Times went a step further and calculated what would happen if you removed all non-citizens from the state population totals and reproportioned Congress, which is what should happen. If, if this were to happen, which would apparently require a constitutional amendment, California would lose four seats. Texas, Florida, and New York would all lose one seat. Colorado, Montana, Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Missouri, and Louisiana would all gain a seat. California would still have a massive, uh, you know, proportion of seats at 49. Texas would still have 35. Florida would still have 26. On the other hand, Colorado would have 10 seats. Montana would have two. Minnesota would have nine. Michigan would have 15. Pennsylvania would have 19. Missouri would have nine. And Louisiana would have seven. This would be catastrophic to Democratic power. That's why they can't handle it. That's why they can't deal with this. This is why they're fighting it. One eight seven seven three eight one thirty eight eleven. 381 Let me go to Brent. You uh, are on the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in. Hi. Hello, Ben. No, you're not old-fashioned. You are the future, and you speak the truth. And Thank you, brother. And you do Mark proud. Uh, concerning President Trump's courageous Fourth of July speech, it was absolutely awesome. It was brilliant, inspirational, and uplifting. And it was not at all partisan. It was patriotic. And that's why they, the malevolent media and the crazy congressional speakers, uh, they have to bury it and hide it. it. They block it in the media. And truth is just destructive to the deceptocrats. Well, let me say this real quick. Mr. Producer, cue up Obama from Fourth of July's. This is why we do this, this show. This is why I love the power of radio having the ability to have these conversations. Because if you listen to what Obama said on 4th of July when he was president, and no one criticized him for this, he was extremely political. 
He was political, and, and I'll get your reaction to this, Brent, on, on the other side. Just listen to how political. We're talking Obamacare. We're talking illegal immigrants. The list goes on and on. Here is Obama in his own words, 4th of July. And, 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 and this, he never got criticized for, quote, being partisan or political on the 4th of July. Take a listen. That, that story of independence. Uh, is not something that happens and then we just put away. It's something that we have to fight for every single day. It's something that we have to nurture. And we have to spread the word. And we have to work on it. And it involves us respecting each other. And it involves us uh, recognizing that there's still people in this country who are going hungry. And that they're not free because of that. There, there's still people in this country who can't find work. And, and freedom without the ability to contribute to society and, and put a roof over your head and you're looking after your family, that's, that's not yet what we aim for. Even now, we're still perfecting our union, still extending the promise of America. And that includes making sure the American dream endures for all those, like these men and women, who are willing to work hard, play by the rules, and meet their responsibilities. For just as we remain a nation of laws, we have to remain a nation of immigrants. And that's why, as another step forward, we're lifting the shadow of deportation from, serving, uh, from deserving young people who were brought to this country as children. It's why we still need a DREAM Act to keep talented young people who want to contribute to our society and serve our country. It's why we need, why America's success demands comprehensive immigration reform. And we celebrate the principles that are timeless. Tenants first declared by men of property and wealth, but which gave rise to what Lincoln called a new birth of freedom in America. Civil rights and voting rights, workers' rights and women's rights, and the rights of every American. I have these vague recollections of when Republicans were saying Obamacare would kill jobs and crush freedom and bring about death panels and Turns out we're still celebrating the 4th of July. The only difference is another 16 million Americans can celebrate it with health care. I mean, doesn't that sound partisan? Because, I mean, you know, and the president, you know, he's going to be partisan. You know, Brent, you, you, you listen to that. How much more partisan can you get than that? And no one was criticizing Obama for year after year after year, walking out there on stage and becoming extremely partisan on the 4th of July. This is the 4th of July. Hello? Go ahead, Brett. Yeah, all, all I was saying was that Obama is not a patriot. He's a predator, and that's what the progressives are. And they t cannot comprehend patriotism. All they understand is cowardice and submission and surrender to the sadists and, uh, that are the socialists. Well, they certainly love socialism. Look at the AOCs. Look at the, uh, I mean, you, you look at the extreme now. That, that What's that chicken-eating congressman? Um, Oh, from Cohen, Tennessee, Cohen, people. Steve Cohen. Yeah, an look, look, it's, look, oh, an embarrassment. This guy is the. You know, it's funny, and I've I literally thought about this as is, is writing about this. You, you look at you know, sky is falling, chicken little, KFC eating congressman from from Tennessee, Steve Cohen. This guy is the congressman from the third uh, most deadly city in America. Third most deadliest city in America. And he's eating chicken in Washington and obsessed with buying votes by paying out reparations and obsessed with trivializing people by, by trying to tell them that without government you can't succeed. This guy is the representative of the third most dangerous city in America, and he's eating chicken in Congress. He's, he's obsessed with impeaching the president. Maybe you should obsess with actually protecting your citizens in your district. And if you ask him about it, don't worry. You know what he'll tell you? That's not his job. Call the mayor. Not his job. You got you got 15 year olds in Memphis, Tennessee, by the way, that were beating up adults after throwing firecrackers at their children at eight o'clock at night. That's his district. And what's he tweeting about? He's attacking Donald Trump yesterday. Maybe you ought to go back to your district, Steve Cohen, and actually do your job and protect people's lives. But again, he says that's not his job. Said like a true socialist, liberal, incompetent person who eats chicken 
in Congress as a stunt while your own district is the third most deadly city in America. That's your district. Spend a little less time eating chicken and a little more time taking care of your citizens in your district that you're supposed to be representing. But that's the liberal mindset right now. 1-877-381-3811. 1-877-381-3811. Ben Ferguson filling in for Mark Levin. We'll be right back. Mark Levin. Welcome back. It is the Mark Levin Show. Ben Ferguson filling in for the great one who will be back with you on Monday after his trip to Israel. I told you a moment ago, I said we got an amazing montage of the media. And MSNBC literally ran a banner that said that Donald Trump hijacked the 4th of July. That's that's how much power they give this guy. <laughs> it is kind of fun when you see just some of these things like Donald Trump hijacks Fort Joy. I had no idea he was that powerful, but apparently he is. By honoring the troops, by honoring